Thank you. Uh, call the meeting to order. This is a meeting of the Hamden Board of Selectmen and Board of Health being held in the Townhouse Auditorium, September 7, 2021, 6 p.m. This meeting is being conducted in person and remotely using video conferencing technology as approved by the governor's order of March 2020. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic one nation under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. Thank you. Does anyone recording the meeting other than us? Please signify in some way. Seeing none, we'll continue. Uh, any minutes? No. Are we pretty much up to date or fairly yeah. close? Okay. Yeah, we are. Uh, the next item on the agenda is a, a, a dangerous dog hearing. Are the people here involved with it? Shelly? Flemings? Uh, I think they're expecting the 615. 615. Yes. Where are we standing with the new street lights? We had that meeting. Did we send that list to was it Pam Hill and get a, a quote in a um, installation date? Uh, I don't know that. Um, I've heard back from her, I know okay. that, but yes, we did speak okay. and yes, she does have a list, sorry. And the crumbling crunk concrete people aren't gonna be here this evening either? No, uh, she had another appointment and she was looking at the 13th. So if that works for yeah. all of you. Oh. Uh -oh. But that's, that's our regular Monday meeting, right? Right. Bring this up on me. Sure. All right, Mr. Chairman, I have a, uh, our annual proposal for environmental monitoring for the landfill. Uh, again, we've used uh, WJF Geo Consultants for the past, oh gosh, decade, I think. And their proposal. Seems to be right in line, 4817, right in line with uh, our number from last year. They really haven't brought it up. But it, I would like to have a motion to award the contract to WJF for environmental monitoring at the end of last focus. 4817. 4817, which is in the RE. 4817. Yes. But that's the appropriate, actually, yeah. inside Yeah. That's inside our testing amount for the uh, landfill. How often are you testing? Is this the annual? Annual, just once a year. Does it do anything different with the solar project going on? Okay. All uh, right. Um, That's standard testing. No, it's no, just standard, standard testing. testing. There won't be anything different. Okay. Yeah. And they also test the, uh, the wells that are connected nearby. Okay, I will. I'll second John's motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, I have a while I'm waiting. I have a, a request from the Veterans of Foreign Wars uh, for a one day permit for a retirement party to be held on Saturday, September 11th, 2020, from 12 noon to 12 midnight. Who's retiring? Uh, who's retiring? You know, I, I don't know. Would you like me to get all the details? Well, yeah, we might want to send them something to the board, maybe a proclamation. No, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm reading it. You want to read it? Come on. Let's redo it. I'd like to uh, make a motion that the board approve the uh, VFW for one day permit. September 11th from 12 noon to 12 midnight. Second. All in favor? Aye. I also have a request. We have a request from the town clerk uh, because of the census. Uh, each, in having to do a census, we have to determine whether you want to be one precinct or multi precincts. Hamden has always been one precinct. Uh, is there any desire to divide us up into 15 or 20 precincts? I don't think so. No. 
Okay. Ever need. Any motion to approve one precinct? I'll make a motion to continue the long standing tradition of being a single precinct town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That means all right. Uh, else? Report on the uh, we had a meeting, Zoom meeting with the uh, contractor for the highway department edition, uh, the Maroy. They gave us the information that they will be starting the groundwork this month. They put the order in for the building. <clears throat> the current projection for delivery is February at this point, but of course, we know how volatile the steel market is right now. Once it is, if we don't have a severe winter, and they're saying they can work in anything under two feet of snow, they can clear. Obviously, the market can be clear for them. So if they hit that timeline, we, they anticipate being done in the March, April timeframe next year. I can give the board an update on the planning board appointments. Certainly. Well, I know that you know I, I would do it for the public. Yes, that's right. Um, three residents submitted applications to fill two positions. Uh, those were interviewed last week on September the 1st. Um, in the meantime, the ad that was uh, published on the website uh, provided a two week period for applicants to submit. And since uh, September 1st, three more uh, applicants have submitted. Uh, the planning board has a regular meeting tomorrow night and looking at their agenda uh, this afternoon, uh, they do not have interviews with the other three on their agenda for tomorrow night. Although uh, that was something that was being discussed this afternoon. I don't have a timetable for that, but uh, at some point, all six need to be interviewed for the two seats. And then uh, the planning board and the board of selectmen meet jointly uh, to uh, make two appointments. Since there are six votes, four votes would be required for appointment. Do we have any idea when they're going to have those interviews? No. Um, as of this afternoon, I don't have any information on that. I did speak with their administrative assistant around uh, two o'clock today. Uh, they do have a new interim chair. And so that's a factor, I guess, <laughs> the chair basically getting a grip on everything and then deciding when to schedule. Uh, the other factor, of course, is that uh, the hearing from July 28th is uh, continued until tomorrow night. And so some decisions going to have to be made there as well. Well, I would imagine the posting deadline, unfortunately, for agendas would have right. included them putting that's right. interviews on tomorrow night. Yeah. Because these applicants came in. Yeah, they came in. I, I saw one right before the weekend, but the other two came in apparently today. Right. So, uh, so that is listed on the agenda, but it, you will not be having the uh, applicants' appointments today? No, no. Okay. We had a week, I would call it, it was a recap. I would have said that the agenda item was more of a recap of candidates for right rather than actually. Well, we had hoping we would have some kind of decision on how we're going to do this, and, you know. But it's okay. If it's up for the seventh. They had every right to keep. Yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. They could, they could. Actually, it's uh, impressive that we had that much interest in the um, the open position. Six yeah. people for two spots. So will you do, do you suspect that they will be interviewing these people? And they'll have a special meeting next week because they only meet every two weeks normally. Correct. I would think so. Um, given that they have two hearings that are pending, the one tomorrow night 
Uh, not sure how that's going to turn out, but on the 15th, they have a continuation of another hearing that was begun on August, I believe, the 11th. What happens if the what happens if the uh, applicant says, uh, "No, that's fine. I'm not going to agree to another extension." Um, do my hearing tonight? It's scheduled tonight. Do it tonight. Uh, one of the difficulties with that, because the law says they have to agree to it. Yes, the petitioner would have to agree either to an extension uh, or uh, to with request withdrawal without prejudice. Those are two options that would postpone everything to a future date. Uh, when there's a full board. If the applicant, yes, the, if the applicant says, no, uh, uh, we need to do, tonight is the expiration, um, planning board, will not be able to act until they have four members. They currently have three. Well, I, mean, I think the only solution at that point would be to have an emergency session with the Board of Selectmen and appoint at least one person and open the hearing and make a decision. Without posting. Pardon? Without hitting the 48 hour post. Actually, it is posted. It is posted, but you don't have a vote from the planning board endorsing a candidate. No, right? they don't. And they haven't met with all interested parties. Uh, again, which, which I'm, I'm not clear on, on, uh, on, on details yeah. today. Mm -hmm. So things could have happened. They might have had some assurance that Petitioner will 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 yeah. withdraw or else uh, waive uh, the continuation until a later date. So I, I don't know where things stand with that, but uh, those are the, the process you think, process items that. Uh, you think they'll share that with us at some point? As soon as the decisions are made, I just don't want, want this to be constructively. I just don't want this to be constructively approved. That'd be wrong. And uh, we're heading down that road. In my view. And as far as them making a recommendation, I still adhere to the fact that why can't we sit in on the interview at the same time? A recommendation to me <coughs> is like if you said, I'm endorsing Don for selectman, that's very nice. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean people automatically vote for me. They say, well, what about the other three candidates or two candidates or one candidate? Mm -hmm. So they come to me with a recommendation uh, and they've excluded the other people. I'd like to know why they excluded them. But again, nothing, as I said last time, nothing precludes us from attending those interview process, which we did. And I think yeah. the, the chair did a good job of presenting your question. He did a very good job. He did a very good job. I appreciate that. Uh -huh. But uh, I still contend that, you know, there should be, I mean, I, I just know every other town that I've seen, the two boards sit down, they interview the people, and then they, you know, they make, a, people make nominations. You know, you nominate this one, this John nominates that one, and we vote. But yes, anyhow, that's not where we are. So we'll have to wait to see if what they decide to do with these three people. Do you think they'll interview them? I would say they. Have I would to think they do. Have they to will. Yes, I, mean, I would think they will. But I'm not. There's a question over here, Don. Question. If um, you don't have four the four members on the planning board to make the decision, then does can can any decision be made at all? And because they're, they're not a non-functioning board to make a decision. <laughs> so, I, I know, I don't so know. So then, what happens? I mean, it doesn't seem to me that they would get it by default when it's when it isn't. Through your lack of action, it's through the lack of not having a board. Has this been checked? Lack of action. Legal? It's, 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 lack of action would yeah. be approved. Well, you, you don't have the board to make any action. But, be lack I, of action. I don't think. I don't think the. I don't think the law uh, uh, pro that. provides for that. I think it just says that in action. It, you know, in if action. the board doesn't take action in ninety days or whatever the time frame is, like the president not vetoing right. something, it just whether or not there's a board. Right. So I think the three, can the three members tomorrow night 
Yes. Uh, postpone. Can they get it? If they get an agreement from the applicant, they can postpone it. They can do the everything on the that agenda can, except open the hearing. Right. The, the applicant can uh, withdraw without prejudice right. and start they can allow all that. Forward. Now, is that because it started with a five person board? Is that because that hearing was open as a five person board? And then now there's only the law three. says, state statute says um, they need four votes out of five to issue a permit or presumably deny a permit. Uh, they have three. The three can act to open the meeting. They can take action on, uh, I think one of the items on the agenda is to appoint a vice chair of the board. They can take action on that. They're just not able to uh, conduct another session of the hearing. The first session was on July 28th. So, uh, yeah. this is all new, all new territory in many ways, with a lot of mandated process to try and thread our way through. Yes, sir. Can you identify yourself? Uh, Jeff Grissetti. Okay. Family resident. Um, does the board of selectmen plan on being there in case the meeting, the planning board meeting, does have to have? Emergency session. Uh, I mean, I'll be. I'm going to go. Be there. I'll be there. Sure. I don't know. Do you know if you'll be yeah. there? I would be there as the liaison. Okay. And yes, Craig. Craig. Yeah. That guy. You open for that guy. I, I originally planned on being there if we had our joint meeting. Yeah. Okay. So. So. Uh, well, one problem. Were... One problem, and I think it's a significant one. The agenda that's been posted does, does not. not include interviews of the three candidates. So I don't know that that can be legally done tomorrow night. No, I, I'm saying it's a petition that calls for a vote right now. Can you three vote with the, the board? No. Has to be a joint meeting posted. No, no, no. He's asking about a vote on the, emergency uh, on the permit. We have no input on that. We have no, no vote on the permit. No vote on the permit. No, we have no vote at all on the permit. Only the planning board votes on the permit. We only vote, on, we can only vote on the vacancy filling the vacancies. And we've already given our recommendations for the plan that they should pursue additional testing. Uh, studies. studies. Right. Some they may have done, some they may right. not have. You know. Anything else on that? I think that's up to date. I just have one other question. I'm, just, I'm curious as to what the difference is between a regular application and an application for a special permit. Why is this a special permit? Mm -hmm. Some things are allowed by right under zoning. I, I didn't hear. Some things are allowed by right under the Zoning Act, and some things require a special permit under the Zoning Act. So there are no rules for the special permit. Guidelines, yes, there, there are, are tons there of are guidelines, a lot of them, yeah. the, and, and they have to abide by all those guidelines. Yeah. But they'll be out the window if if it is constructively approved, right? right. So, I'll just leave nothing. All right, anything else on that? <laughs> the uh. Are the people for the dog hearing here? Want to come over here? Yeah. 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 Put that chair. We put the light on you right now. Okay, I wanna, uh, I'm open the hearing on the uh, uh, it's called the other chapter 140, section 157. Of the Massachusetts General Laws uh, regarding dog complaints. Uh, the first thing I want to do is swear in the witnesses. Uh, so I'll do it just as a group rather than so. Shelly, you're going to testify, yes, sir. My name is Tracy Thomas Fleming II. Okay, write, write that down. You can get the name, please. Tracy Thomas Fleming II. Is there anyone else who would be testifying at this? Okay. Uh, do you solemnly swear the testimony you are about to give at this hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth on the pains and penalty of perjury? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. 
So we have uh, four uh, incidences uh, over a period of uh, time. Uh, the first instance, uh, well, the first instance, the no, uh, the uh, dog, uh, sorry, a neighbor called, uh, complained about a dog uh, going after her chickens. The Hamden Police Department uh, was called, an officer went up there, and they, uh, later on, the dog officer went up and we told the president that the dog needs to be kept in your yard. That's Sarah. I guess, told Sarah. This is my wife. The second incident was. Uh, I would like to state for the record that we were new to the neighborhood. Uh, uh, we had just moved in at that moment when the dog, who was 11 years old at the time, decided to make a visit across the street. The chickens were in a uh, cage. She barked at the chickens and ran back. Okay. Um, so just to be descriptive about it, she wasn't chasing the chickens around, trying to get the chickens. Yeah. I just feel as we go through this. More of an exploration at that point? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, sir. And uh, I have three children of my own, uh, five, four, and one and a half. And all of my dogs are very good with them. I regularly have older children um, that are their um, age, between five, four, and one. At, and be given a non sporadic time. And they're very good with new people and uh, children. Well, and, and how many dogs do you have? I have four, sir. Two oh. are 11 years old, and two are, they just turned one years old. Are they all pit bulls? Or? Yeah, I don't like this. I try to stay away from that phrase. Um, none of my dogs have extremely large heads and, and big stout bills. Yeah. I have staff bull terrier who is 11 years old. Um, and then I have two small puppy mixes. Um, I'm not, I'm uncertain. We haven't taken to get their blood work done yet. Yeah. But um, my female has more of a thin nose and the male does have a little bit more of a broad face, but mm -hmm. um, all in all, not fighting dogs or trained poorly. Or, mm -hmm. um, but they have gotten out twice the puppies and have done their exploring too uh, as puppies. But I would also like to say that their training is coming to keep and we are seeing a profound amount of growth with them lately, and they are being much more responsive to uh, any and everything. How big are the puppies? Um, one is probably 45, and the other one's probably 60 pounds, the male and female. They're, they're pretty much, you know, they're a year and three months. I don't think they'll grow much bigger. When you say you were new to town, when was that? Uh, we moved in a year and a half. A year and a half ago. So that was when the first incident was a, over a year ago? Yes. Okay. And all these incidents that were reported, are they all the same dog or different dogs? No. Uh, one was Madison, who was 11 years old, and she got found herself out across the street. Two reports were the puppies. They knew there was water down behind the house. So um, had a fence put up and it was uh, you know 90 degrees. So they went exploring out back um, on two occasions. And uh, and then this previous one was um, our oldest male dog, who himself was 11, turning 12. And uh, he was uh, just let out. And apparently he barked at the person at the end of the driveway. This is something normal for him. He doesn't have an attack pose on at that point. And my wife was immediately alerted. Um, she said he heard him bark again and she was at the door. Now, to her negligence with letting what she understands as an old man who just stays on the property out um, is not the truth to the general public. They see a dog and it's off leash. It can raise some, uh, you know, fear, concern, and I completely understand that. So as, and I, I'm sorry to interrupt the gentleman. No, go ahead. But as we go forward and as we have been reacting to understanding and me having pointed a very pointed conversation with my wife recently about how the dogs need to be um, kept as if, you know, they're, they're not, you know, you're trusting, you know, everybody else doesn't trust them. So they need to be caged. So they need to be locked to the cage. So we have recently constructed a six foot cage um, with 50 by 30 um, right behind our house that you can, from inside the house, leash the dog, bring the dog to the, cave, the kenneling area, open the kenneling area, go into the kenneling area, shut the kenneling area, and then let the dog off leash at that point. Um, 
there's a, a four by four buried in the ground, four feet to receive the runner that goes from the house to the dog kenneling area. And uh, that's our immediate response to the situation that we are currently in. So, no. Last night they called me, it, it, they're doing a really nice job. Is it completed? Defense. I'm 95% there. Um, it's, uh, I'm going home to work on it tonight and within, <laughs> within the next two days, it should be completed. Um, and she should be able to, and I'll also like to say that, um, through all of the chaos, we have the one-year-old who's now eating solids and not nursing. And we have the five-year-old who is now going to school at Green Meadows and having a great time. So she now has a lot of um, weight. Free time to spend with the dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, more more availability to be um, as 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 engaged as she needs to be with all that she has going on. Um, I support everything she does, and she wanted the dogs, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been fine. Smart man. And you've been fine. You've been fined twice and you paid the fine? Yes, sir, immediately. And Shelly, you think this is a good resolution? Yes, they, they've done a really nice job and they've always been very respectful and nice and polite. Okay. They've never been rude right. or mean. Or, and they, you always, what, uh, you know, they always agree that it was their fault. Okay. I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what, why don't we, <clears throat> if, if this is all right with the board, that we uh, continue this hearing for two weeks? Sure see how you're doing yes, sir. and uh we'll go from there and uh we'll just we'll just continue for two weeks and we'll and then uh, shelly will fill us in how they're doing if it's all set up properly and everything we'll just uh, close the hearing that'll be the end of it so 21st yeah 21st yeah right so and, and i appreciate your coming in and explaining and uh and the positive actions you've taken already, you know, you're even paying the fines a big, a big thing, and we appreciate it. That's huge. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging that. I don't need to take up any more of your time. Um, 20th, I'm sorry. So the 20th. 20th. Okay. And Shelly, you'll fill us in on anything. Right? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for taking the steps. Much. Thank you. Shelly, quickly, on the other thing you mentioned, you're going to have to have a everything working out. We have the South Road and we have the Main Street. Yes. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and it is good. Except Main Street hasn't paid the fine. We'll get that. <laughs> we have our lawyer. We have our collection lawyer. <laughs> All right. Uh, just on the fire station, we had our. Uh, huh? Okay. Well, can I read that? Tell us. What's the letter of support? Tell us. Do we already draft something or are we? Waiting for no, we're going to listen to them. I think they have a pre thing for the one the legislatures. Yeah, I don't know. Do we want to like ask, because uh, Larry uh, Lesser has been really honchoing yeah. about that. Do we want to let him yeah, know? Ash, Ash is in there as well. Yeah. yeah. So, Maybe just let both their, their chief of staff know that we've got it on our agenda for next week. Robin knows that. Um, so Ash. let Joel know as well for Eric. And, you know. well, talking, talking about Lesser, is there any. Uh, you spoke to them about the property over mm -hmm. any earmarks are right now the governor is as you heard wants to use money for something else of course we know if you took care of the unemployment hole that he created three billion dollars uh the fire station we toured the east long meadow fire station and thanks to the department over there for yeah. welcoming you're, you're doing a letter to them right okay and they were, they were very welcome. And it was very interesting. It was very interesting for us. And the challenges they had as well, and they shared them yeah. with us. Uh, and we're, we'll, we're planning to uh, visit two more. Yes. I think that their biggest challenge was they said too was space. Yeah. They, were, they were constrained on space too. Sure. Well, I have to say, I did learn that about, I would say, 40% of the space. Maybe 35 percent of the space was bunks, day room, kitchen, kitchen lockers, lockers yeah. exercise room, uh, conference room, 
His or her bathroom. His or her bathroom room. thing in administrative room. In administrative room. Right. That's because they have a 24 hour, seven day a week, three trips. Yes, yes ma'am. As chair of the Capital Planning Committee, I'd requested that I attend the next tours. And I'd like a little more information upon, uh, on what was learned at uh, in the East Auto Tour. So, so the biggest thing I got out of it was that there was a lot of, they had a lot of space, uh, you, like I say, for bunks and, and that type of thing, because they have 24 hour station. We don't have a 24 hour station. I don't think we'll be seeing that in the very near future. So the other thing was that the, they did have very good spacing in between the uh, turnout gear and the Fire engine where it's safe for them to get dressed. Like that type 12 of, feet, I think. Like 12 feet, yeah. You know, right? And we're like, what? You know, two feet, well, three feet. Even, I even but I still feet. think it's amazing how when they built that, they thought that was going to be, yeah. you know, the cat's yeah. meow. And then, <laughs> you know, 10, 10 years later, yeah. oh my gosh, we're out of room. They're, they're stuck in a position where they can't expand the footprint because of the, the landfill that was built on. Mm -hmm. So they can't go anywhere other than up. Is that on summer tours? Yes, right next to the police station. Right next to the police station. It's on the built on the land. They used to form a landfill there. How many bays do they have? They have uh, four bays. Four bays. But they're back to back bays. Mm -hmm. The drive throughs straight through. Drive, you drive straight through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had uh, um, they had the same type of uh, ventilation equipment that we had uh, that we just installed. And let's see what else is directly. Oh, they're, they're getting rid of one of their big. One other big, they're taking two primaries, right. trading one in, right. rolling one into a secondary. Right. So they're getting rid of one. They're getting rid of one. Can you be more specific on that primary, secondary? So they have two vehicles right now that are daily use vehicles. If a fire is called, the tanker. They're, tank, they're, they're not really tankers because no. they don't store water. They're more of their first responder fire vehicles. So they have a ladder truck and then they have two regular, like, I, Tankers for a better, for lack of a better term, but they're two engines that they use for their, their calls that don't require a ladder. One of them is getting traded in for the purchase of a new modern um, response vehicle. One of them is going to come out of service as a daily use and be of a backup. So if something were to happen, they have that backup ready to go. So when I say secondary, it's more of a, a backup, not a there to fill the need of a hole for some reason, a breakdown, um, a secondary fire or something like that. And, and one of the reasons they're doing that is for insurance, right? Insurance was lower with the, the secondary vehicle and a backup vehicle on the end. When was it built? I think you said 97, 03, I think. Yeah. Was there any issue of um, modern current vehicles being too large for the no. bays? They, they don't have that problem. They have tall bays. I, yeah. I want to say they're 20 foot doors, maybe. And wide enough. Yeah. And what? Wide enough, also. Yeah, yeah, wide enough because they fit their ladder truck in there, no problem. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's tall. <laughs> okay. And they have two, two ambulances? Two ambulances. Well, actually, I think three, three ambulances. ambulances. Three ambulances. Yeah. And they're busy all the time. They can't handle all the ambulance calls. Right. They actually had quite a bit of service from action. Yeah. I think yeah. they said our action ambulance has been over there 165 times this year. At least once a day. At least once a day. You don't have dates for the other tours. No. no. I'm not good, no. Yeah. They also had um, the fire cleaning equipment um, yeah. for their, their turnout gear. Mm -hmm. So they have separate washer and dryer for regular clothes, but then they have one for the carcinogens and stuff like that, a fire apparatus. And it was a, it was a pretty decent machine. Mm -hmm. um, it was, it had its own space, its own little, you know, decompression area, I guess what we call it, where they would put all the, the equipment to dry that they had washed. Yeah, the question I had for that, and I don't think they answered it was, if they're washing that stuff in the washer, where does that go? I mean, are they dropping that into the, you know, basically the water sewer system? Would we be constrained because we have septic? Would we have to have a tight tank for something coming out of that? If we're deconning the equipment, yeah. it seems like you wouldn't want that dropping into the groundwater. That'd be a question for our next tour, I think. So they also said they got a state grant to do all the equipment too. Once, well, I know, once, once I mean, a year. Yeah. Right. I'm sure they send that maybe off, off site. They come in. 
They can be in a way, but I mean, yeah. you know, they're probably um, tight tanking they're it, they're not the putting it, yeah. No, I don't think it was a grant. I think they just said the state does it. The state just does it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They'll come in and clean your equipment. I guess I'm not really clear, John. The point is good. When they clean the um, gear that's uh, been involved in a fire, so they hose it off or whatever they do, Where your question was, where does that waste water go? Well, basically, if they're saying they have a separate washer for deconning, the equipment, right. where's the gray water going from that That's, washer? And you don't have the answer yet. I don't, I don't have the answer. It's a question for next tour. Right. We have one here. Mm -hmm. and it's, I think it's filtered. And I don't know, like you said, I don't know where it goes. Right. And the filtering system may be just something typical. It might be that. part of the machine. Right. Right. And you have fiberglass air tanks. Rather than the Lisa, I think I told you via email that we're looking at Wednesday or Friday for mm. the next tours. Like Wednesday tomorrow? Tomorrow. Yeah. Wednesday tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Keep it tight. Tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. They're going to get back to it. Yeah, we, have, we don't have set times yet, but that was our availability. Okay. All right. Um, Special town uh, review, a special town meeting warrant articles. The only thing I had, and I think I had sent an email to this about before, I recall during our initial conversation with, oh golly, Peter and Mary, or whoever was doing the bridge thing, that we were going to get 34000 but it was going to require a match from the town for some amount. And this is the engineering study. <clears throat> and I know Bobby just said that we can use our chapter 90 money for it. But we've already gone ahead and allocated our chapter 90 money for March projects. Yes. So if there is some small component to match, let's just find that amount appropriated at special town meeting and put it in the bank. Okay. Because as a warrant article, it doesn't expire. And we don't have to worry about the time. I have a question about that. We have one for a highway truck, and then that's not that. Kubota thing that he's talking about, is it? I think that's separate. No, that was the F-150. That's the F-250. So he wants a, he wants a backhoe? He's looking for a small excavator type thing. We've been renting them, you know, all along. Heck, look at the project we approved for the park, you know, putting that piping in next to the softball field. That's using his typical excavator rental that is in the dry month. If they're doing cleaning out of ditches, they might be using a small excavator for that. When do we have to have these articles done? That's the next question. We need to pick a date to close the warrant. If we're doing October 18th, yeah. We, we need I, to find I, out from. There, right? I think we're going. Are we planning on having uh, Dick Patello in next week to talk about the financial? Yes. I have. I set aside two dates for the board to review and sign. I believe the last day that you can sign is like October the 4th. Correct. For the next meeting of the board, whenever that is, I'll have a draft. In fact, I'll, I'll email you a draft so you can look it over. Um, and as long as we sign by the fourth, we're fine. Can we still meet with advisory too? Yeah, well, they're, they're going to have, have their the hearing, but they, the timing for a special town meeting is different than a regular town meeting. Right. It's a little longer. There's a two week period instead of a single week. Uh, so we need to check with Carol and Doug as to when they want to have their hearing. Obviously, they'd like our the warrant before them. Yeah. I think you're lining up on the fourth. Looks like all the stars are coming up on that day. So, Don, you'd be looking to close at the 27th. So, the the yeah. so let's meet. So we're going to meet with Dick and then on the 13th. How's Cliff, by the way? He called today. Hippo. He called today. Uh, he did. Uh, suffer a severe injury in a vertebra. He's going to have to have an operation. He's learning this afternoon. He learned this afternoon when that will be. Um, I did talk to Dick and I talked to uh, the assistant there, Susie, and they assured me that they can hold the finances of the town together during his absence. And that uh, at least until the town meeting, they don't anticipate any issues or problems. Okay. All right, so we're going to meet with them on the 13th next week. Okay. All right, um, 
want to jump over and do the selectors reports and then we'll get these things done and we'll go to the executive session. Uh, quickly, I think we're all pretty well aware of what's happening with in the conservation, or sorry, the planning board world. COA uh, meeting is next week. Housing again didn't have a meeting, uh, lack of quorum. So the next meeting will be next month. Uh, Historic had a, I don't know if I mentioned last week, an excellent open house, I think. Historical Society. Historical Society. Uh, there's a, a presentation. Craig, you want to report on that? Yeah, the Historical Commission is having a presentation on September 9th at 7 p.m. here in Town Hall. Uh, they're going to go over the pros, cons, and answer any questions with a presentation of having a National Historic Register mm -hmm. in town in Old Hamden Village. Um, they're going to answer all the questions that people may have concerns. Uh, it'll be a good informational session on Thursday. And it will be on Zoom as well, recorded for viewing then or later. Good. Parks, no, they didn't have a meeting, so. No response. I was there inventory. Right. Coming along, I'm sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything uh, back to parks again? Yeah. No answer from our cleaning on a quote? No. What do you think? <clears throat> Uh, and I did see no that they, I did see that they posted that they closed the spray park again today mm -hmm. because it needs to be power washed. It's the year, I'm sure. It gets, yeah, you know, it really just, but here on the side of caution for safety. Yeah, you know, they said it was slippery. But, you know, they did hire one person to start maintaining and cleaning, and he's he's been down there quite a bit. I think he said when I talked to him, put in 30 hours mm -hmm. doing maintenance and cleaning around the park, mm -hmm. taking care of what he can. TA report. Okay, I'll go through this quickly. Police negotiations are underway. Two sessions have been held. I have one tomorrow as well. Um, the We had talked about a public forum uh, to address the ARPA funds, the so-called American Rescue Plan Act uh, from Washington, where the town is going to receive a million and a half dollars. We talked about a public forum uh, to let the public voice any interests or concerns about the spending of those funds. We've already committed somewhere between 700 and 900,000 for the water line extension project, mm -hmm. depending upon you know, the final number there, but we'll still have a sizable sum of money remaining. Uh, I'm suggesting September 21st or 22nd. Mr. Chair, I'd like to really see that more in October. We have a lot going on here with, uh, especially getting ready for the town meeting, our financial, uh, especially with the injury of a key person. And yeah, we can put it off. I, I think it's, October it's, is a little it's, more it's, realistic no, for some That's fine. There's, right? no, there's no rush. There's no pressure. No, no, no. no. In fact, it's actually something that the board wanted to do. To spend the money. Right. It's something the board wanted. It so wasn't really required. Right. Right. Okay. Um, also, uh, I spoke with uh, uh, Mary Thurlow of the State Gambling Commission today regarding the crosswalk project. Uh, I submitted a proposal to them quite a while back, I think in June. Uh, <clears throat> there are two steps in Boston. One is that they have a committee that reviews all the proposals. And then secondly, the gambling commission itself, the gaming commission, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. um, have to use the correct euphemism. Um, the, the gaming commission uh, has to vote on it. Uh, the technical committee has met. Uh, they wanted to, me to answer a few more questions. We had a Zoom conference today. I believe we've answered the questions. Um, and they had asked for some statistics on accidents along Summers Road and Allen Street. I asked the chief of police to produce that, and he did produce a chart, um, which uh, I just got it this morning, and I gave it to them this afternoon. I'll send a copy to the board 
if you want to look at it. Um, and they've also asked for uh, information about the design of the, the sidewalk project that the DOR funded. Uh, I and, have that. Pardon? I have that. I, I had asked if we had an electronic copy. I knew we had a paper copy. Uh, so they're going to they're going to want that. Anyway, they pushed off the decision and their meeting from September the 9th to September the 23rd. This is really pushing it in order to get that project completed before the snow flies. So I was very disappointed, but nothing we can do. Well, what was the total cost of the, the equipment and installation? Uh, we're looking at, uh, well, we, if we count the 23,000 for the digital radar device, uh, and it looks like around 30 to 32,000 for the other other uh, equipment and materials. So radar device was approved though. Correct? I thought that was approved, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, but so, I mean, so we'll so, be outstanding. If, if the question is how much of the 100,000 no, will we use? It's going to be no, about No, my half. question was how much are you asking to be approved by the Gaming Commission for the process? 32,000 oh, yeah, yeah. I'm asking for that as well. That's part of the package that uh, needs their approval. Well, what rest of the package needs approval? The total with the digital radar device plus the crosswalk installation, plus the signage and so forth, it's gonna take us to about 53,000 at this point. Right, but I thought the radar device was already approved. No, oh, it's not. No, oh. it's in the package. Oh. So, this is a second radar device. Pardon? Oh, oh no, we've got it's not the one that we bought. The one that we bought, yes. Is in that, is in it's in the package. Okay. So that wasn't pre-approved already? No. Okay. Oh. No. Um, I thought it was. I thought, it, yeah. So we well, spent that out of. I, I, I told her <clears throat> that we were buying it and uh, no response. I, I think the commission may very well be inventing the process as we go along because I, I informed them that we were going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then I was told later, well, no, you'd have to put that into the package. So yeah. we'll wait till the 23rd. Yes. Um, I do think that. We're in good shape and it's going to be approved. Yeah. Um, just would like to see it done because it's, it's a safety measure. Uh, I mean, you have to keep in mind this is the same outfit that awarded us the money and didn't tell us for three years. So, <laughs> they sent the check. You already sent the check. So, here, spend the money. Oh, wait, check with us first. Well, we did have a member from Springfield on that commission, and he did so well that he's been promoted to the marijuana commission. <laughs> yeah, but when I presented That's a true story. Him, I'm not, I'm not joking. But Bob, when I presented in front of him, he had to recuse himself because he knew one of our members. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't know. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So just to backtrack, they gave us $100,000 to use on traffic mitigation solutions. <laughs> we received the $100,000 as mitigation for any impacts the Springfield Casino, the MGM Casino would have on traffic or safety in the town of Hamden. Well, if it has any impact, it's gonna be along Allen Street and Summers Road because that would be an artery taking people right into down, into Sumner, into Sumner Avenue probably, and then right into downtown. So that's where the focus of so spending- Is there any chance they won't approve the 53,000 on that package? I don't think that there's, it's going to be, I think it will be approved. Right. Yeah. I mean, they were yeah. fairly positive yes. today. It, just, uh, it concerned me to keep putting it off. And well, I, mean, it is, I think it's all about process and I don't know that they have a lot of established process. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we can see. Anything else? Okay. Um, let's see, what else? I just want to let everyone know that we're continuing to work on the Cumberland Farms issue. Mm -hmm. Cumberland Farms was sold to a company in London, but they've kept local headquarters in Massachusetts. Building commissioner has sent another letter to them uh, citing violations. Uh, we are waiting for a response. If they don't respond, the building commissioner has another step that I think will be very important and will increase 
pressure on the company to improve that area. So is this is a second violation. Yes, second the first violation was sent right before COVID. There was no response to it. I think part of the, what was going on probably was the purchase of the company by a London firm. But um, we haven't received a response. He sent the letter two weeks ago. Um, if we don't, uh, we're going to form a committee. And the committee would go over and cite all violations. Mm -hmm. And a letter would be sent, <clears throat> make, <clears throat> make the improvements, bring this building up to code, mm -hmm. or the town will do it and attach a lien to the property. And that usually succeeds because I know <clears throat> that it's been on the market. And if we take that next step, it'll be difficult to sell that property with a lien mm -hmm. and so forth. So, well, so that's, um, no, I, that's the report. Much of my time this past week has been spent uh, in discussions of the various process issues involved with the planning uh, board, filling the vacancies, and then acting on these two petitions for uh, storage at, uh, at Summers Road. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, okay. So uh, we have two items that we uh, determined we need to go to the executive session on. One is the uh, litigation with the Ham the Wilbraham Regional School District, and the other one is uh, collective bargaining with the uh, Hamden Police Union Association, mm -hmm. uh, from which uh, we will adjourn. We will not go back to public session. Uh, uh, another question. Yeah. Yes. Craig had asked me to come tonight to talk about COVID. Oh, I just wanted you to get numbers to the board. Numbers that you're allowed to give the yeah. board. I, I know we talked this morning and there are some. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. I, I have them if you want. Well, them fire them. away. Okay. I did 10 days back. Mm -hmm. I went to Maven and went 10 days back because that's when you would be contagious and in quarantine for 10 mm -hmm. days. We had on the 29th, we had three adults, one child, two of the adults were vaccinated. One was unknown that have come down with COVID. Um, they will be out of quarantine tomorrow. <clears throat> On the 30th, we had two adults, unknown whether they were vaccinated or not. They'll be out on Thursday mm -hmm. out of quarantine. On the 31st, we had no new cases. On the 1st, we had two adults and one child. The, one of the adults was vaccinated. One of them is unknown whether they, they are or not. They're out on Friday out of quarantine. On 9 2, we had four adults, all unknown whether they were vaccinated or not. One teen and one child. They'll be out of quarantine. So that's, that's six. Four adults, one teen, one child. Yes, correct. And they're out on Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then on the third, we had two adults, both unknown, and they'll be out on Sunday. So a total of um, 13 adults, three children, and one teen. But starting tomorrow, they'll be boom, 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 on right, the off, right off the list. And they'll be off the list. Right? And what's our positivity rate? You know? We have 17 people. 4.1. 4.1. Sometimes the Maven and the reports from the state include some wrong numbers because that. they count us as in the county. So mm -hmm. sometimes we'll get, I just had two taken off that were Springfield. They weren't even us. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they get put on the wrong place, mm -hmm. which skews our numbers. Yeah. That much I can tell you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jane. And you want it every week, so I will. I was just I curious, you know, what we it. had. Yeah, just absolutely every week I'll update it and give you a report. On yeah, you can just email it or however it works. You know. Okay. Yeah. If that's good with you. Yeah, that, that, that was that was kind of what I was alluding to, but I'm, uh, okay. I'm glad you came. So uh, I'm happy to do that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Jane. Not a problem. Anybody else got an issue? Quickly wrapping. 
Bob, uh, there's going to be an update meeting on the 15th. Uh, the Main Street water thing is progressing well. Uh, they finished with CONCOM. Very soon, let me look at Bird Check. And let me do those. Bid specs are going to check. Not very good. Let me check. Yeah. How it goes. All right. So we have two items this evening for executive session and the turn to executive session. One is the uh, litigation with the Hamlet Wilbraham Regional School District. And the other one is the board will review contract proposal with the Hamlet Police Union. And we will uh, uh, we'll adjourn from those. We will come back into open session. A motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to enter executive session first for the purpose of uh, reviewing with our council the status of the current litigation with the Hamlet Wilbraham School District. And second, so the board can. Uh, Review ongoing contract negotiation status with the with the patrol union without a return to open session. Second. Okay, John. John Vernon. Donald Davenport. Frederick Stey. 